is not written. That means that it's not also made by the parliament. So it's not a written law. And also it's a case law. That means that uh, equity uh, is empowered, is strengthened by the decision of the court. And also we have a uh, uh it is developed by the court of chancery it is developed by the court of chancery by the court of chancery then uh, Equity is flexible. Equity is flexible. Then uh, equity is a supplement. Uh, to the rule of common law. It's a supplement. So the rule of common law. So, so these are the five points I would like to mention here. So as part of the uh, features or characteristic of equity, it is not written. So it is not written. It's not in any uh, any written document. It is developed. I mean, it is uh, not. It is not written. So it is not made by the parliament. So it's also a type of law, just like common law being handed over from one generation to another. And also, is number two, it's also a case law. It is being empowered by the decision of the judges, that is the court. And also, it is developed by the court of chancery. The court of chancery developed court of equity, developed equity. And also, it is flexible. It means that it is not as rigid as common law. It allows come, uh, uh, court of chancery or court of equity wants to hear people want to hear, see the differences between the issues before making decision, and also it is a supplement to the rule of common law. So it is a supplement means that it is there to support to assist common law, not to cancel common law, but where common law is having some lapses. So equity uh, is there to amend the lapses, okay, to try to adjust and to bring meaning into what uh, the common law is actually talking about so that it will be acceptable let us look at the uh, uh, status of general application um, the status of general application is a statute that was actually uh, developed by the uh, uh, that was this a law made by the Parliament of Great Britain? So that's why we call it status of general application. So the status of general application is a statute uh, or law made by the Parliament of Great Britain. And uh, we have uh, the applicable date is first day of January 1900. First day of January. So what that means is that. Uh, all status or especially the one in Nigeria, the one we are making use in Nigeria. Today we still have status of general application we are still making use in Nigeria. Those were the one uh, passed by the Parliament of Great Britain on or before 1st day of January 19. Other ones passed after that were not uh, uh, applied or made applicable uh, into the Nigerian judicial uh, system, but those ones that were passed on or before first day of January 1900 were made applicable on or before. So, so that was the uh, applicable date, first day of January 1900, and that's why we have an example of status of general application which we are actually using in Nigeria today. And you will discover that they are law made on or before first day of January 1900. We have what we call uh, the the Will Act 1874. Will Act 1874. That is testamentary document. Law regulating testamentary document. We have Sailor Goose Act. 
sale of goods act 1893 and uh, we have a bill of exchange act 1882 1882 and we have partnership act 1890 1890 so we have infant relief act of 1874 infant relief act 1874 so these are examples of a, a status of general application they were passed by the parliament of britain and uh, they were brought into nigeria to be administered uh to be administered or to be made use by courts in Nigeria. And also, we have this con uh, condition for the application of the status of general application. That means that in Nigeria, before a status from England, we become status of general application that we can make use of. Uh, number one, it must be a public act in England. Public act in England. So, and also, it must be in force at the relevant day. That is first day of January. So, on or before this day, it must have been in existence. It must also be applicable subject to local circumstances. Applicable. It must be applicable. That means that a uh, court in England must have been applying it to settle issue. And also, it must not be in. It must not be consistent to Nigerian uh, to local legislation. It must not be inconsistent. So that means that it must agree with local legislation. So it must be in agreement with local legislation. Uh, so that is uh, the condition for the application of the status of general application. So that means that before the status of general application we are mentioned about, before they were part of laws in Nigeria, they passed through all this. These were the condition they, 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 they all passed through. So those of those laws that pass through this very condition were made applicable so to Nigeria were part or became part of Nigerian law. Let us look at uh, Nigerian legislation. So this also we have finished with the um, received English law. This is another important uh, source of Nigerian law. So it is also part of the primary sources. So we have Nigerian legislation. Nigerian legislation means a law passed by uh, our lawmakers. So in Nigeria today we have the National Assembly and the State House of Assembly. These are the two uh, constituted body that, uh, that passed law in Nigeria. So the National Assembly passed what is known as Act of National Assembly, while the state State House of Assembly passed what is known as law of a state. We have law of Lagos State, law of Ogun State, law of so law of a state. So, uh, so these are the two, the same institution at the national level and at the state level that pass law. That is that make bills to become law. And also. Uh, based on what is written here, it says this is the most uh, most important source of Nigerian law in recent times. So that means that the law that we have been having uh, in Nigeria today, those laws that we are using are made by our own uh, legislative 
body. So it is made up of a status passed by the uh, legislative organs of Nigerian government. Uh, Nigerian legislation consists of status and subsidiary uh, legislation. So uh, we have status. Those are the law passed by the National Assembly or State House of Assembly. And we have, that is what you call status. So, and also we have what we call subsidiary legislation. Subsidiary legislation are law passed by any other body apart from the national or state uh, house of assembly. So we have, let me, status. Status. So, and also we have subsidiary legislation. This subsidiary legislation includes law made by the local government and also any other institution empowered to make law. So we have law made by the uh, institution like school, educational institution where the Senate will sit and pass law. So those laws and the law made by the uh, local government, all these are known as subsidiary legislation. Why they are called subsidiary legislation is because those laws don't pass through normal legislative process. So it is only law from the National Assembly and State House of Assembly that pass through normal legislative process. That is why law from state na National uh, Assembly or State House of Assembly, those laws are known as status. Why other ones are known as subsidiary legislation? Uh, let us look at an example of a uh, Nigerian status. Uh, we have the Act. These are the examples of Nigerian status. We have the Act, Act of National Assembly. We have the law, law of a state, State House of Assembly, law of State House of Assembly. We have Act. We have a uh, decree these are law made by the federal military government federal military government and we have edict these are law laws made by the state military government so these are examples of uh, uh, status we have in Nigeria and which we are also we are still making use of them uh, today so let us look at another important uh, source. Of Nigerian law and it is known as a customary law. Uh, it is very important. Uh, the customary law consists of rule of customs accepted by members of a community and uh, it is agreed as binding among them so that is customary law in nigeria we have customary law that governs our activities we take customary law to be our law so it is that the customary law is a law that developed from us and is being handed over from one generation to another so that is so common law is also uh no written so it is being handed just like uh, sorry customary law So we are talking about customary law. So let me uh, make that correction. So common law is the one peculiar to the people of England, which we are making use in Nigeria now. So customary law is the one that we have now. So customary law. So what we have now, uh, we have in Nigeria, we have customary law that is so common to each tribes in Nigeria. So each ethnic group is having one customary law or the other. So, and um, in Nigeria, we have two. The customary law is divided into two because of our, our system of our religion, the type of religion we practice in Nigeria. So, customary law is divided into two. We have what we call uh, ethnic customary law. Customary law. So we have ethnic customary law and we have Muslim law.
So, hätten wir